Hey folks, Hoop here, and welcome to episode 50 of my hardcore Minecraft world, which means it's world download time. So I'm spending 50 hours completing builds around this world to make this more presentable and expanding upon some of my largest builds while modifying some of the oldest ones too. We've got a lot of work to do, so leave a like on this episode and please subscribe if you haven't. Heads up, the world download is available to members and Patreon supporters if you want to tour around this world yourself. Starting off, I'm making a quick trip down into my storage room to grab tons of stone. Then jumping over to the industrial district to pick up grass and dirt blocks from that storage room to expand my mountain. As currently, the mountain looks fantastic until you look at it from behind. Today, we fix that. I want to not only attempt to finish the back of the mountain range, but I also want to expand it going north to a more gradual endpoint than it currently has. First steps are to plot out the height using pillars of stone and then connect those together with stone and dirt. This will help to build out some of the new shapes for the mountain. With the rough new northern expansion kind of done, I decided that I should actually focus on the back of the mountain first before I get carried away with finalizing the shape of the north end. So back to placing in a bunch more pillars of stone to get the roughest of rough shapes in. I am working with the existing Minecraft hill to turn this into a bit more of a plateaued region. And as normal, this has turned into jumping around to whatever section I want to make progress on instead of focusing on a single one as i'm really just making this all up as i go i decided to add two more larger ridges coming down the back to merge into the ground closer to the horse race and we're nearly three hours into this build already getting a lot of the rough shapes in and it's not moving too quick quite yet but hey uh the nether tree farm is now hidden look at that you don't see this gross mess anymore oh i need torches up there definitely don't want that being blown up by anything other than the parts that are exposed to be exploded i gotta say i'm really happy with how this section here is turning out as we're merging it down under the hill and then bringing up a little bit further so we can work with the Minecraft terrain instead of completely recreating it. I could definitely spend all 50 hours here if I'm not careful. So for now, I'm focusing on just getting the stone added in to clear out my storage room a bit further. This build session, however, is all about finishing off the plateau section on the back half until the big rock hiding the nether tree farm, which will cover up even more of the wire framing I put in place for the mountain itself. This translates into building a bunch more rocks sticking out of the ground. And then I did find this dog that was too adorable on the mountain looking out over the valley, so I had to tame him. But back into stone and grass block placing on the edge, I'm building out a few more of those bean shapes like I did on the front to help transition the mountain down into the plains biome, as right now it's pretty obvious where the custom terrain begins. With that done, I spent another 40 minutes or so building out the rock faces all the way down to the tree farm, where from this angle, things are looking pretty good. All of the grass blocks and stone are in place throughout here until we come around the corner and it's still got a lot left, but I've already put about seven hours into the mountain project itself. So I think it's time to move on and focus on a few other things and we'll come back later if we have more time. But here's our friend looking out over the valley. Yeah, look how cute he is. I love him. Yes, dog. Uh, Minecrafter and his Minecraft dog watching the sunset. Today is all about the bits and bobs throughout the world and finishing them up, and I have one that desperately needs a fix. My massive gold farm is broken. How, you might ask? Well, when I updated to 1.20, I pruned a lot of chunks to make the world a lot less laggy, and uh, I accidentally deleted the output in the overworld, which means we need to rebuild it. So I'm crafting up a ton of chests and turning a lot of them down into hoppers. Jumping through my broken personal portal, I I appeared underground, so I removed the obsidian and started to find my way up to the surface where I did find a lush cave and spent about 30 minutes running around to gather up some spore blossoms and small drip leaf because I can't help myself. After clearing out the cave, I did build up a platform to relink my personal portal to the roof and thankfully it did work. And then I jumped into building the death portal again that I never want to use. I built a portal 24 blocks off the ground and started to fill in the glass box around it. The idea here is the piglins will teleport through the portal and fall to their death inside of this glass box where I added in all of the chests and hoppers down at the base to collect the gold. I am 100% going to be using an auto crafter here eventually when I can because uh, these chests fill up with a lot of junk real quick and I am never gonna need this much rotten flesh. I already have a copper farm that makes too much. Next project on the list today, I want to revisit the upper section of my city as I never quite finished this back section here along the edge of the mountain. I want to add in three more structures along a curved pathway that leads to a staircase 
to bring it down to the main level. And to hide the flat face, I'm planning to add in a big doorway as if it's leading into a crypt. Before I even think about where these buildings are gonna go, let's focus on getting this pathway sorted. The builds can just kind of push back into the mountain as we need to. The nice part about building pathway is I can just clear out the space and slowly carve it out of the terrain instead of trying to make the buildings fit something specific. Where I can work out the upper platform and staircase being added in out of our full blocks. This is starting to look pretty good for a base up here and the plan's coming together. Now I need to tear out all of the stone and smooth it out with our roadblocks. Much, much better. This will do nicely. Now I just need to gather some materials for the actual buildings going up here. First up, I keep running out of packed mud blocks and my little farm can't quite keep up anymore. So I grabbed two shulker boxes and I wanna fill them up with mud out here to restock for this project and some future ones. A little while later and both of our shulkers are filled and I've got a bunch of muddy mangrove roots here we can use too. I think most of everything else I need, I can actually find back at home, hopefully. To finish off the mud, I grabbed a ton of wheat to craft down an entire shulker of packed mud. A quick trip down into the quarry. I'm grabbing up all of the different stone materials I need from the storage room. I wanna use loads of copper here too, which leads us into the factory to gather up some aged copper. And of course, as per tradition, I must spend 30 minutes or so in the lumber mill crafting down all of the different wooden materials I need to detail this project even further. Quick trip down here for some campfires from our villagers. And a few bricks over here to craft some large pots. Little bit of terracotta. Quick brown bed for a bench and some barrels. Lastly, ow, a quick trip into the nether to visit our frogs and grab some frog lights. And here we have it. The entire sugar monster is assembled, which means it's time to get into the build here. I want to start off next to our library over there with an acacia log base coming all the way around. And I got to take this back here a touch and we can bring in a little bit of stone on top here nope uh, for the first story which is just gonna have some stone bricks running across here with a little coal ore sprinkled in here for some shading on top of the stone brick trim i'm adding in a second story out of oak planks and stripped oak logs going up to the tippity top Okay, I decided to flip the top attic here for birch just for a little bit of a change. This is a bit flat on the front here. So I wanna bring out a bit of a balcony along this point using some of our spruce. Something like this here can work out pretty well for us using fence gates with trap doors on top so you can kind of see through it but since it's probably a bit cold in this region we want to cover it that's where our mangrove right here is gonna come in you know i think i really like that that looks pretty good along those vibes to keep the roof simple up here i'm just building it out of mangrove planks and we have a little market here in the front i think that fills the space really well for the next building facade i need to take this all a block back but i'm gonna keep it the shape in place that i already built out for the road for the corner here i thought adding Adding in a tall 5x5 tower could fit in the space really well and break up the roof lines as they're pretty consistent so far. And as we're going for the full flex on the city, I do have to add in one of our beacon street lights. I added a sandstone section here right above the first floor and we could come along in detail with a few of these guys and then we can do some flower pots on there. Not doing it on every single one because it gets a little consistent. Some oak trap doors along here for some window shutters and up above we can throw some campfires. Where this is going to transition into our roof here and to not have a fully just straight line let's add some of our spruce trap doors and stairs going across i've used this design a few times throughout the city but i just love it and it helps kind of set it as one of the styles of the city houses from here i built out a spruce trim for the roof and i'm adding in copper for the rest of it of course we do need a chimney so that's over here on the corner now with this weird pathway kind of winding up the side of the mountain to a small little lookout or camp of sorts where somebody's living up here. I am really happy with this upper area currently. And for the third building I want to include, we're going to start that down here to hide this flat face, where I'm thinking we can make it look almost like a crypt or a catacomb of sorts, with a big doorway leading up to probably here, and then we can work over a little bit of our polished granite for, what, a five-wide doorway, and then we'll just bring this back up. Behind this, we can just bring in a little bit of stone and then a big old dark oak door of sorts where we can 
bring in these planks to maybe look like a bit of like a hinge or something. And to look like it can be open, we can add in a few levers and flip those and that'll work. A quick little detour. As throughout the city, I've been trying to include these little shrines of sorts, which I want to include on either side of the door over here with a little upside down mud brick thing there. And then we do the allium and bring in that cool pop of the prismarine like a so with the glow lichen. Then we can cap it off here with our stair. And there we go. That is looking much better here. Now to build a sort of chapel building on top as if it stood here for a very, very long time in the city. I also added in the small tree with some flowers out front to finish off the small planter box we created and a spore blossom just to get the fun particles going around. Along with a few more details thrown around, I think this corner is really starting to come to life. Here it is. This corner of the city is finally finished off with three new buildings. And I'm nearly 16 hours into this challenge already, so oh, I gotta keep on moving. Ah, I'm so happy to have this done. This is very much like my happy place in the city, working on all this and expanding it and seeing all this completed in the corner. I'm a very happy flipper right now, but we got more to build. We have now passed day 5,400. With that, it's time to revisit another region I've left blank. This random hill right here has always bothered me. So we can start out by setting up a beacon with a little bit of haste to action. How did you get out of the sheep pen? How did you get up here? Oh, well, he lives here now. But I want to remove this entire hill to create a bigger cliff face behind it. Thankfully, I do have a few empty shulkers we can fill up with some blocks. I did not realize this was hollow underneath. That makes my job a little easier. A little more clearing done. And the train is pretty much ready to go. I also want to take the dirt that I did gather to smooth out the train and make it into something that we can build on a bit better. A little more time spent on placing dirt and things are looking much better. Starting from an unusable hill, we now have this, which we can definitely build on. Before we get to that, I have this much dirt left. And a final step, I want to fill in these weird open gaps. Maybe this can turn into like an extension of the lake. Saves me a little time so we can focus more on building and I'll just tear this down a touch further so it's a little deeper. And I'll grab some stone to patch that up. Then over here, we can just extend this out. I didn't even think about this. I was going to just patch this up with dirt going across, but this is more fun. That's not half bad. Now the one above it, I definitely want to fill this in and much better. Down inside the little pond we created, I grabbed the stone and now we can just fill this in and extend it out so it's not so flat. There we go. That'll do the trick for this little cove, I guess. Kind of. Yeah, it'll work. I still got a great amount of dirt left because I actually gathered some more and we can grab the stone now as I want to bring in some of these bean shaped rocks like we have over there for the cliff face up here. Thankfully, I built a few beans in my time, so these are coming together pretty quickly. Question. Do you like the snow up here or do we hate it? Uh, let me know. Now we just need to texture these new rocks, which means I need some basalt, tough blocks, a little bit of acacia log action, pole ore, light gray wool. Lastly, some light gray concrete powder. For now, it's the fun process of going along and just adding in some of our shadows along the base here with all of our... Oh my gosh, there's a skeleton. No, that's our basalt goes. Well, shadows along the base. And we gradually work into a little bit of our lighter colors in here. That looks pretty good along the base for some shadows. And the coal ore looks really weird up close, but as soon as we get far away, it just kind of looks like a darker stone. And lastly, we come along the top here for the little bit of the highlight. Those are creeper toes. I'm gonna get rid of those. And we have textured bean. Now to do it all along those. Okay, I'm really happy I took the time to do this. It did take an entire hour to texture these rocks though, so that's a thing. But it's good because it means I have space to build another small farmhouse here. Woo! Let's get the beacon cleaned up. We can throw all those pieces right back in here. Then crafting a little bit of coarse dirt and we can grab some spruce slabs. Coming around the back of the doghouse I built almost two years ago now, we can extend a little path to get down to our new region.
Definitely need to bring up the dirt along the edge a little bit more, but we are all the way down here at our new flat area. Just a little wonky along the back of this old grain silo. Looks like it will work getting all the way back up to the top though, so it should be good. It doesn't have to be super functional. We just need the idea that this is a pathway. And from far away, that's gonna work. Now for a quick farmhouse to fill in the space, keeping it small so the tree still feels very big. And you, sheepy, are coming with me. The sheep has been hanging around the entire time I've been building this entire space. So I added a little pen for them that they can jump into. Come on, walk around the bush right in here. Just uh, don't pay attention to all the zombie noises. I'll go find you a friend. Oh, no, no, everybody's leaving. No, it's on. No, yeah. Okay, we're taking three sheep. Okay, you two, come on. Let's go. All the way over to your new pen where you have so much less space, but it's gonna be great. Come on now. There we go. A nice little family of sheepies up here now where you all stay forever. But the simple house is ready to go and it's got a table and a furnace inside and a loom. Yeah, decorations. We did it. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. We'll, we'll give them a bed too there. Want to know what we're doing with this open space? Planting a field. That's right. I destroyed an entire hill today and terraformed out a massive platform just for the space to plant a new wheat field. So if you can take the two seconds to subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. If you made it this far in today's episode, that means you probably enjoy my content. So subscribe to not miss out on any future uploads. I do love me a good old wheat field. As an extra bit, let's take a little bit of our bone meal around here and get a little bit more grass grown in. I'm gonna just leave the dandelions in, but I'm gonna get rid of every single other flower out here. I'll probably add something down here eventually, but that is looking pretty good. I'm really happy I spent the time doing this. Before we get into the next build, I wanna repair my gear and gather some copper at the same time. I had to find some excuse to come out here after we built it in the last episode. I mean, come on. I just need to give this a minute or two here to ramp on up. Setting up an auto clicker, I AFK'd here for about an hour to collect a ton of copper. And check this out. Look at all that in there. Ooh, more coming in. And over here. Let's see how many blocks this crafts down into. That is just over four stacks of blocks of copper. I love this farm, but it is so noisy. Now to place it all down in the copper factory. Gathered up what was left in here and just replaced it all. And some's already starting to age down, but I've got 52 blocks of aged copper now. Well, I guess I had them, but I, you know, I picked them off, off, off the floor now, which is better. It's a new day. And my new cape from the mob vote is here. What do we think of it? It is definitely very pink, but I kind of like it. But I also really loved my last one. So I don't know which I'm going to use. I'm going to try this on for now. Side note, today is Halloween IRL. Not that it's going to be very helpful seeing as this video is not going to be out for a while. I want to buy a bunch of name tags. And if you didn't know, on Halloween, there's mobs that spawn during the night that have a pumpkin on their head. This is the only time it happens throughout the entire year. So a way to make a really cool, long-lasting world is to, well, collect a bunch of these mobs as they're super unique. So we're going to make a bunch of name tags here, Halloween 2023, and see if we can get any cool ones. I'll keep a few boats on me for now, too, just so I can lock them in places. Now from here, I need a bunch of cobblestone. As my next goal is to link up the two parts of the city with a big road connecting them finally we'll start out with some full blocks here for a quick line connecting ourselves all the way up then after that we can come back in with some slabs to smooth it out and expand it to be a little bit wider this is the main road but a simple line will be very boring so i'm adding in a few curves as it moves up the hill as if we're molding the road into the terrain even though it's floating and well i really want to block sight lines with buildings instead of just being able to see from the top to the bottom of the city so people can more easily easily just get lost inside of it. And for a main road, I think something like this will work out pretty well. But the sun is dropping, so maybe that means it's time to find some cool mobs. Okay, nothing spawning yet, but this is way too curvy here, so I, I'm gonna fix it while the mobs come back in. That's why we did a single line instead of everything. Oh, we have a skeleton here with a pumpkin. Look at him. Oh, I'd love to find some with armor, but you buddy, let's just, let's just get you in a boat no in the in the boat please how about you walk forward into the thank you there we go perfect and this way he doesn't burn i don't think creepers can have pumpkins on their heads so i think it's just skeleton and zombies we're looking for oh my god die thank you oh there's a zombie with a pumpkin okay we can at least get one that had a fire bow why does this skeleton have a fire bow okay this one with a pumpkin has a sword he's better I just need to kill the other one Okay, buddy, you come over here. 
You can, yeah, right. No, 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 no. Oh, he got in the boat. Perfect. Yay. I would love to find some with some armor on, but I think that's that's going to be a little bit harder of a task. Oh, he's got some leather pants. Look at him. No, I don't want him. You'd think the local difficulty in the, my main base where I exist the most in this world after 5,000 days of hardcore Minecraft would spawn some more rare mobs, but no. Oh my, I just missed everything. Thank you. Oh, his is glowing. No, no, I'm sorry. Ah, okay, over here. Sir, I want a glowing pumpkin guy. Quickly, before the sun comes up, we'll figure out where to transport all of them later and how we're gonna do that. For now, I'm just collecting. This whole episode was themed about beautifying and fixing up things in the world, and then I'm I'm doing that. Daytime is back, which means we can expand the road. The main one up here is nine blocks wide, so we probably wanna keep that going the entire way. I'm just gonna kind of ignore it from here up, seeing as I'll probably build some buildings into that, so that's how wide it's gonna be. Eventually, I do want side roads connecting up to there, which we can link around the side, and maybe that would plop down somewhere like right over here, so it really loops along the edge of the hill. Or maybe it does something like this. I don't know. We'll figure it out once the buildings are going in. Now for the fun task of expanding the road to look like a rib cage. I'm glad I'm doing this the slow way as I get some time to think. And I have been doing that as I'm thinking up here in this spot could be a great place for like a market square of sorts. This way we can open up the tight streets and create a little bit more contrast as you're moving throughout the city. So I'm just going to turn it into a big old blob for now and uh, we'll figure out how this goes later. But that size with a big old fountain in the middle should be pretty fun. And I was thinking as it's nighttime now, the pumpkin mobs are back and I have an ice spikes biome right over here, which means we might be able to get a stray with a pumpkin on its head and that'd be pretty cool if this spawn strays that is oh there's one wait we got it okay don't kill each other just gotta get rid of everybody else in the area and then we can get the strike oh he's helping oh how nice oh it's another one never mind not having fun oh he's in the boat perfect yay just so you stay alive have a name tag i don't want to test it but i think because oh there's another one because they're wearing pumpkins aren't they immune to the sun because they have a helmet on oh he's got a he's got a friend now okay uh, you two can both just live in there. Let's go get the other one. Okay, you've got a nice little house too. Look at you. Wow, so fun. Okay, I want out of here. Yeah, I, I bought... <laughs> I don't think I've ever had so many arrows in me. I don't normally collect mobs in Minecraft as I just love to build things and uh, mobs are just kind of a hassle on the way of it. But this has been really fun collecting the pumpkin one. Sun is about to come up and I can test with this guy right here. Oh, it looks like the other one caught on fire. So our pumpkin ones are safe from the sun. Okay, second night is done. Back to work placing our cobblestone to see what the road will look like all blocked out. We are all the way up to that new market stall now. And this road feels really big. But I think on that, I want to add a little bit more structure to this building. Well, I guess there'd be a building in here. So maybe we bring this out this way. Reason being is I want this to help create the shape of the market square so it can kind of inform me on the way that I want to be adding the buildings. I'd love to have a few roads, maybe one coming right up here that goes backwards. But I'll be honest, 90% of what I'm doing today is probably going to change in regards to this road once I start actually plotting out where some buildings are going to go and I get into that designing phase. Definitely not a to day project but it's something i'm trying to think of so we can add this as a more of a straight line going across stepping back every few blocks as if there's some like row houses coming up so if we think these two little cobblestone bits here and the two over there are where the road's gonna come in and go out then maybe i just turn this out this way and instead of having the blob shape we just bring in a few more rigid lines going across like that oh it's nighttime night has fallen so i continued on the road and kept my eye out for any rare halloween mobs Literally zero pumpkin mob spawned, by the way. As a next step, we can grab our stone cutter and turn all of the remaining cobblestone down into cobblestone slabs. As next up, we need to start smoothing out these transitions. And I don't like to just include one slab because it looks a little artificial for me. So going with the more naturalized, we're gonna bring it out two or three slabs. And again, as I've mentioned many times, we're gonna mold this as we go and we actually build the houses. Everything I'm doing right here, yeah, I'm probably gonna tear up a majority of it. But at least right now it looks pretty nice, yeah. Just adding in the slabs along here makes it look so much better, but it definitely needs a little texturing. Quick trip down into the villager trading hall. This time visit our stonemasons where I might actually have some in here. Nope, none, none at all. But I wanna buy a ton of polished granite. And of course, none of these are trading polished granite, please. 
It exists. We can't buy regular granite. So if I buy all the polished here, I can save my regular granite for other building instead of wasting it here on a bunch of polished stuff. Now we can take some of these and turn them down into some slabs. As I want to continue the pattern I did up here with the polished granite going down the edges, just one block in from the outside, where we can start that right along here. No, 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 my road. Oh, he exploded one block. Yeah, that's fine. We got a skeleton right up here with a glowing jack-o'-lantern. So that's that's something new. We can name him and get rid of his friend. Hi, you can stay up there for a second, okay? Woo! I hate everything. Get in the stupid boat. Oh, he's in. Above our market square is now done. Minus a few new dead things around us. We've got a new friend. And here's me placing in a bunch more polished granite on the bottom side. Now with this little side road over here, a fun way we can show a change in the path is simply by just retexturing it. And I have a bunch of red and brown blocks here where we can start tearing up some blobs to refill them back in with these new blocks. Might look a little out of place for now, but I think in the end, it'll fit in really well with the environment. I don't have too many options when we get into the slab layer though, so we're gonna have to make it work with these three. Okay, at the bottom here, we need to merge back down into this form of road texturing, which is very different. And I think if we just extend up a little bit of the andesite and stone here, we can make this work together. And that should do it. At the top, we'll hard cut it off here along the polished granite as if they're keeping the middle maintained compared to this little side road leaning down to the harbor. I know it's just a big road, but I'm really happy with this step, merging the two parts of the city together. And as I've spent some time on the upper city, I want to also focus here on the lower city by filling in these three empty spaces I've left throughout the region. Starting with this small space here near our mountain stream. I want to create a garden, which starts with some trees. Let's get some birch leaves to start out here and we're gonna need a ton of birch fences a lot more than that need to make a quick stop inside the tree as a way that we can keep it really safe in there is by using some glow lichen i love taller trees inside the city peeking over the buildings so we have this big birch tree coming in which covers this waterway really really well and you want to know what would be better a second tree now back here for the garden itself i would really love to add in a small carrot patch i love the idea that all of the these are just backyard gardens for the people living in the homes nearby. That should be big enough. And I really like how along this, I included a small like fence for them. So we can just kind of copy that idea over here, just along the front. It's okay if you can kind of, maybe I'll change this one out. There we go, that's better. Now along this right up here in the birch tree, I think we can add in like a man-made beehive. Then along the back here, we can just bring in a few leaves to kind of fluffy up this for a little bit more landscaping options. Little rooted dirt out here to kind of blend our way in. And that fills the space really nicely. Maybe we need a lantern. I love lamp. I do love adding in little flower spots and everything like that in the city here as it really just naturalizes everything i don't want this to feel like a concrete jungle so these little spaces i i love them this isn't really a usable space back here as it need to be for maintenance for this side of the water wheel so i think we just leave it for lore reasons i don't have to do anything there Woo! and this is why i love adding nature into the city where as a whole this just looks so good now but we've still got two spaces left on the lower district that i still want to tackle today and next up we need something right right over here at the armory. I think we have enough space for a building near the armory. So I jumped over to the wood storage room to start putting together a bunch of materials we can use, trying to go a little more colorful with this build by using mangrove and crimson logs. From there, a quick trip to grab white terracotta and crafting a ton of exposed copper into stairs and slabs with a pit stop in the nether for some frog lights. Back over at the house, I've already set up a small pumpkin patch with a custom tree and this thing as like a garden storage, I guess. That'll go behind the house as I don't want the house itself to be connecting into the walls, so I think having that space is really important. Starting off the build, I want the first floor to be a shop, so I'm adding in a large window for people to see inside at all the merchandise. I mean, wow, just look at the view. I'll buy one of everything. I also extended the wall back over here with the alleyway access into our back garden and a staircase that'll lead up to the second floor so I can get up there more easily to build with because, wow, my elytra's almost broken. From there, I finished off the first floor and added an overhang to the far side. With that done, I'm continuing to work on the house with a second story made out of our mangrove logs, more designed for a living space, so I added in a few windows for natural light. 
Okay, I really like how this is extending over the street. It's really starting to fit the space pretty well, especially at the start of the third floor, which means I've got more blocks to place to finish off the building. And now two of the three places I picked out to fix up in the lower city are done. The only remaining space is over here, right by the back entrance and next to the copper factory that I have no idea what to do with. And we're just gonna completely ignore that all of this is very exposed and floating over here. That that's a project for another day also to follow up halloween ended and i didn't get any more cool mops beyond what i showed you earlier big sad and now for a quick trip into the nether as i need to repair my elytra very badly with that out of the way i started on a new wagon storage building to fill in the last empty space now to grab a little bit of stone some cobblestone mossy cobble and some andesite as i went pretty simple on the build over here i think it'll work out but we definitely need to get rid of the grass below it so we can have a bit more space to actually put a wagon in the middle and i have this small extension over here we can use for something i'm not quite sure what yet along the edges where the grass is coming in we can start with a little bit of our mossy cobblestone to kind of blur the line a touch and then work in a little bit of our cobblestone from there that can start as our larger blob shapes filling in some of our gaps with our stone with a tiny bit of andesite we end with something like this which uh, should do the trick maybe a little bit more andesite out over here in this right here that's screaming for just a big old tree I would I'd love that by the back gatehouse we don't need anything too special in here so I'm adding in three simple cart designs that are empty and just waiting to be used by the factory All three of our wagons are in place and a little bone meal with jungle leaves around the edge. And I'm starting to really like this corner. We got a little flower patch there and another one over here. And it's very much just a work yard, which of course behind the gate needs the addition of a big old tree. Marking the third addition to the industrial district completed. At this point, I am very happy to have added six new buildings to the city and this road connecting up both sections. So I decided to revisit the mountain project with 18 hours left on the 50 hours of this video i set off to gather some dirt but was quickly distracted by some llamas this is big as i've never seen llamas spawn this close so i brought them back home in the 5451 days i've survived in this world the only llamas i've ever had were wandering trader llamas like these two here behind me so i am actually really happy about these new ones but back to the mission i gathered up two shulker boxes of grass and dirt blocks to restock a bit before i could continue on the mountain project any further where i did also find three new wolves on the mountain to bring home that i dropped off back at the starter base for now and then a quick trip down into the quarry i grabbed up some more stone and we're off building up the northern face of the mountain as it's the wireframing i can see the most from my main city the hillside did dip off quite a bit here so i felt the need to jump down and add in some of those large bean shaped rocks along the edge to lift up the grass a few blocks and more gradually ramp it up into the mountains then extending the mountain ridge line further north we are connected all the way to the forest as we move into the oak forest i do need to clear out a good amount of the trees that are still standing to make space for the final stretch of the terrain coming in i really want to start merging the terrain into this landscape here so a lot of the rocks are getting smaller and the dirt areas are becoming much more common and taking over the mountain as we slowly smooth out into the existing minecraft terrain which i actually really enjoy the final result of the north end coming here together this officially finishes everything on the front of the mountain so i went around the back to begin the process or i guess continue the process of wrapping around the backside to slowly stitch the two mountain sides closed together as we move back up the mountain i do want to add in more of those rocks and consistently be increasing the height for that just grand view of it all i really love seeing this mountain coming together here especially from the view over here on top of the pillager outpost that is just something really special to be looking looking at collapsing all the way down into the oak forest we're definitely going to need some custom trees there soon and now for the most requested build in this entire world we're going to transform the entrance into the villager now cave okay, we're going to transform this thing I'm definitely going to need a beacon for this one. As yes, you are all right. I will admit it. This needs to have some extra space to fly through to avoid hitting the walls, roof, ceiling, floor, whatever you want to say. We've probably hit all of them at this point. I was getting really good with the elytra, but finally, after nearly 5,500 days, I should probably redo it so I don't die from something I built in the first 100 days. And this right here is going to be much better. My plan here is to fill this entire space in with some water in case I do hit something 
and fall down, we won't take any fall damage. Leading into a second pool right here that is right above the original waterfall that I used to use to get in and out before I had an Elytra. As I do really love that part, so I wanted to make sure it stayed in as it does line up pretty perfectly with the builds down below. Now for the top, we can add in a few little bits of like drippy vibes to help explain why the water is down there with a bunch of the pointed dripstone. These are just going to be the little ones, so I don't bonk my head on them as I am trying to fly in. Okay, that should do really well for the top, and they're all positioned above our pools. Next, I ran down into the mine to gather a ton of cobble deep slate to use in the build. And I just realized I used cobblestone for the roads. So that was pointless. The deep slate was used as a trim. So I guess we can do that up here as well. Before I get too carried away with that, let's work first and foremost on getting our cobblestone path in. Cobblestone in place, a deep slate wall, and some mossy stuff added in throughout for vibes. We can replace our torches with a few lanterns to make it a little bit nicer. Now in the middle here, we can replace these torches around the pond with some glow like and so it stays a little darker but still stays safe oh i had meant for water to be coming down here yeah looking pretty good and now for the test flight we can zoom on in and that's at least twice the size and whoo we are making it down i think i could do that easy every single time and back out is just as easy except this is very ugly so let's clear out the trees i grabbed a bunch of materials here that i want to be using for the build since the castle is right there i need to keep this a little bit on the shorter side otherwise the castle will look really off with a massive dwarven gate next to it so instead we have this decently size dwarven gate now with a little bit of coarse dirt we can connect up to the road up there and perfect looks like the road has always been here connected right up into the path to the castle i am really happy with how this turned out but i think we need a big old tree right here to help separate them even further since we tore out a bunch of oak trees i want to add one back in and there we have it a brand new entrance to the dwarven villager trading cave we're now officially we can see for the first time can i make it all the way down in yes the perfect flight and of course going back out oh a little spice here but we can do it I will definitely never hit my head on that ever again. I will. Many times. But it's better. That took a lot longer than I expected, so I only have a few hours left. And we need to fix a lore. I built this mud brick castle a while back to defend the river from enemy ships. And well, it's it's done an excellent job because uh, no decently sized ships can actually fit through the river to make it there. From all the way out to the ocean, they first have to fit through that and uh, then this. There's absolutely no way any boats are getting through here so for the final project today i want to get started on expanding the river i've been wanting to do this for like a year and i'm finally making time for it but first i need to fix my tools with another quick trip to the wither skeleton farm i've got a ton of empty shulkers here ready to go let's set up the beacon one more time here in the middle of the river and haste two is going to be needed for this one and of course i'll start mining outside the radius of the beacon here at the mouth of the river spot where it meets the ocean desperately needs to be expanded to at least three times as wide my goal today is to level the terrain down to the water level and just clear out the space which that should do out here before we can get rid of the canyon walls i also need to remove all of the trees along the edge that was a lot of trees but now we can begin to push back the cliff faces i am less than 11,000 blocks mined away from 1 million with netherite pickaxes and i thought that could be pretty cool to finish off here for episode 50 as i'm using the shovel a lot yeah i i i, I see the joke in that i just gotta expose the stone first you know i set up two more beacons as this is a massive region and i got to work tearing out the landscape to expand the river going with a stretch of about 40 blocks or so to start just to see how long it takes to get down to water level and this is so much larger than i expected nearly two hours in and the first stretch is done with a bit on the second quick break as it's happened i've now mined over 1 million blocks with my netherite pickaxe the sad part is i still have so much space to go and at this point with all the time i have remaining i just want to clear this out as i really doubt i'm gonna have time to decorate it but i've got to keep moving on with break 
breaking all of the blocks to expand the river a little bit further which means burning through many many pickaxes and gathering so many materials in the process for the end product of this i wanted to look like this was all quarried out by the people of the city as if they took the stones from here as uh i've got i've got plenty of materials though almost every single one of these is completely full but my thought is that they first wanted to expand the river here to allow ships to come through for trade and second they could use all of the stones to further expand the city but uh in minecraft reality i'm just gonna be dropping all of the boxes down here in the storage room as i should probably get back to digging before i lore too hard with six pickaxes nearly broken already and the last 90 minutes of time left on this video spent digging out the rest of the canyon i've got to remove the beacon still but there we go the canyon is clear enough for ships just a casual um uh, 70 000 blocks removed in the process nice Still more work to do on the river canyon but i am very happy with this so far over the past 50 hours i've managed to change so many things inside this world even modifying some of my oldest builds while planning for a ton of future expansions and honestly just having a good time building inside of the world with that the new world download should be available for tier one members and patreon supporters by joining my discord and it can't be a flip download without a shulker monster so uh this stays please leave a like on this episode as it took a ton of time with planning on top of the 50 hours in game and be sure to subscribe if you haven't with that i'll catch y'all on the flip side